It's time I told you guys the story of my childhood. It's mostly unhappy, and I'll try to keep the video short, but like, it might go long, so if that's not something you're interested in, then you should probably click away now. I was born fatherless, and to a mother who was an alcoholic and a drugaholic. So clearly she was unfit to take care of me, so my grandma did, and we had a lovely time until the time came where she had to give me up. So the reason she had to give me up was not only was she old, but I kind of was crazy. Uh, had some behavior problems and was just, you know, nuts, basically, and so I went to see a bunch of specialists and was put on medication and went to special schools to try to fix me and stuff. Didn't really work, but whatever. Also, before we move on to the next living situation, I was in foster care at this time already. I had a social worker. I was considered a ward of the state, even though I lived with my family for whatever. I was, I was in the system, I guess you could call it. So who did grandma give me up to? Well... I'm so glad you asked that question because I am so reluctant to talk about it. It was my aunt and uncle. And I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I have a seething hatred for this woman. She would beat me for telling the truth when she thought I was lying. She would beat me for lying when I was lying. She'd beat me because my grades were poor or misbehaving or any reason that she saw fit that I needed to be hit. So one day, very sick of her shit, she backed me into the kitchen corner where the knives were, and I pulled one up, and I said, if you lay a hand on me, I will kill you. Kind of wish I had. Not gonna lie. To further condense the story, the very next day, she comes sweeping into my room, screaming about something, and can anybody guess what she's screaming about? If you couldn't guess, don't worry about it, because it really did come out of left field. She accused me, a child who had never before even knew this thing was a thing, she accused me of molesting her baby kids. We're talking children, by the way. I'd never heard the word before, I didn't even know what it meant, but she wanted explanations, so I did the one thing that I learned from her. The only thing good that I learned from her was how to lie really well, so I lied. I became a really great liar, and it saved me from getting hit thousands of times, and I thought it would be the same with this incident, and it was, but now the problem is, is that I can't rectify the situation because now she thinks that I'm actually a rapist to her kids, and her kids also think I'm a rapist to them. And if ever given the chance to talk about this, I know she'll present the journal and say, well, why did you write this? And I'll say, because I had to write down lies for you to believe them so you would stop hitting me. That's how deep of a liar I had become to save my own hide. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not a sex offender, thank God. Nobody believed my story. I had to tell the authorities, my social worker, everybody had to know. And I lied to them too, just in case my aunt would pop up back in my life and hurt me. But nobody believed the story, so... So the social worker swoops in and takes me to my first actual foster home. And it was a really great place and I thought that I was going to stay there forever. <laughs> well, that didn't happen. What did happen was is that we packed up all of my things and they said that we were going to go on a long vacation so I needed all of my things and they dropped me off at my grandmother's house and drove away without me. And seeing as that was my only good foster home besides my grandma, I was kind of heartbroken. So I lived a couple months with my grandma, and then the social worker came and whisked me away to my next foster home, and I was basically homeless, and I'll tell you why. Actually, let me give you some background scenery so the setting makes sense. So I was born in Southern California, and then I moved up to Northern California for a time. And some places in Northern California are very rural, so like you have farmland or just miles and miles of green whatever, and there's like nothing around. It's very country, like think backwoods kind of stuff. So right, homeless. So in order to get to my house, you had to crawl through a blackberry bush, and when you got through that, you would see a clearing that had really tall trees and a running creek, and you would see my house, which was a box with a wooden crate bottom to keep it into a box shape so the box didn't collapse, and basically most of my belongings stuffed into it. That's where I lived for basically 11 months. How could this be? Didn't you have loving foster parents in an actual house to live in? Well, I mean, technically, yes, but they lived on the other side of the blackberry patch across the really big pasture. And you see, I wasn't allowed to live in that house because I was just not good enough. So I could not come in. I could not sleep in a bed. I could not bathe. I could not eat. 
I was locked outside of the house because they didn't think I was good enough. And for 11 months, my social worker didn't believe me because on the days when my social worker was scheduled to come visit, I was allowed in the house to eat and bathe and look presentable so that if I told any outlander stories, they wouldn't be believed because how many bad things could happen to one little girl, right? Clearly, she's not a rapist, but this home, oh, she's making up all sorts of lies about it. My life. I'm making it sound like I just solely lived in that box, which isn't exactly true. There were times when I was deemed good enough to come inside and actually live like a human being. So it mostly was in the box, like I would say 80-20. That's probably the ratio of in the box and not in the box. So 80 box, 20 in the house, if that makes sense. So anyway, I was sick of this shit too, so I ran away. So about two miles away from where I lived, there was a restaurant for some reason like there was nothing else around except like farmhouses and other sorts of just country house stuff and there's no other kind of business so i show up at this restaurant and i'm in tears and this waitress finds me and she asks me what's wrong so i spill everything to her and i beg her to call my grandma to come get me but my grandma doesn't come get me my foster parents come get me and they tell me that i'm going to be leaving tomorrow so i better pack my things and because it's my last night, I get to actually stay in the house. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Thank goodness all my shit's in a box, I guess, because then I'm basically already packed and ready to leave. So, yay. And we all can guess why I was made to leave that foster home. It's because you can't tell strangers about your life because they might get nosy and discover that, oh, what you're actually saying is true and we can't have any of that. So, bye-bye. So I leave that foster home and things only get worse because I fly down to Southern California and go to my very first group home. Are you ready for this laundry list of bullshit? All right, here we go. In this group home, I was almost raped by another girl in the cottage that I was living in. Um, I don't know why we called them cottages. They just are. I don't know. Anyway, I learned how to knife fight. I watched kids beat up kids and touch them inappropriately. I watched staff members do the exact same thing. I watched a kid swallow some staples. I also watched another one hang themselves. Um, I was pestered into trying a bunch of experimental drugs, and thankfully, to my knowledge, I wasn't forced to do any of them. I said no profusely every time they asked. Um, I, myself, was thrown against a brick wall, and my head split open, and I had to go to the hospital to fix it. That place was full of bullshit. But that place was temporary, so in the span of, I don't know, a couple months, I saw all of that shit go down. And I went to a second group home, and while I was there, some lawyer showed up and asked about my head incident and all that kind of stuff, and my case apparently opened their eyes to what was really going on at that place. And to this day, as far as I know, it's closed. It closed almost immediately. It's Fantastic. I am so glad that place doesn't exist anymore. So yes, one step to making the system a better place. And this is where things get a little boring because while I was there, nothing overly terrible ever really happened. I mean, I would even call it normal, I guess. I was, was kind of cool. I actually kind of liked that place. And then my last foster home came. And this one requires a touch of backstory. So remember the bit about me living with my grandma and being a bit of a head case? Well, this next foster home, I actually met... Um, this person prior um, back in the day when I was going to all these places. So we kind of knew each other. I moved away. I came back down to Southern California and in the first group home that I was in, they had their own like school network or whatever. So um, the school, I forget who in that group home told uh, her, but someone was like, hey, so, you know, Sparrow's back in Southern California. Do you want to see her? And my foster parent was like, yeah, let's do it. So we saw each other. And then she was like, hey, how do you feel about me becoming your foster parent? And I said, sure, why not? So she went through all the hoops and stuff or whatever. And it took a really long time, as you can tell. Um, but by the time that she was a foster parent, she came and took me away to the group home. And I lived with her for basically the rest of my adolescent years. That place was better than almost all the other places I've been in, but I suffered a lot of emotional abuse, I guess you could say, because we were very toxic for each other, so I'm sure she suffered lots of emotional abuse as well. And because we're so toxic for each other, we had an incident, like, about, 
I don't know, half a year ago where Too Long didn't read. Um, she accused me of almost killing her cat, demanded vet bills, and I said, I didn't almost kill your cat. Cats eat stupid shit. I'm not paying your vet bill. Sorry. Um, I think it's best that we just don't talk to each other. So we're no longer talking and it's whatever. I, I really honestly do not care. I thought I was going to care. I thought I was really going to be like, Ugh! but I was like, Ooh, I'm relieved. This is over. So. And if for some reason you want the full cat story, I will put a link to my blog somewhere. You can click on it, read it, whatever. And on that bombshell, that's basically my whole childhood in a nutshell. Oh, before I go, please, 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 please don't pity me. Don't feel bad. I mean, if you want to feel sorry for me, okay, I'll accept that one because it's nice to know that people care. But really, I'm okay with this. This is my life. This is what's happened in it. I've come to terms with a lot of it. And... If I'm okay with it, then there's no need to, like, aw, poor baby me, you know? Really, guys, sometimes they even make jokes about this stuff. So, um, anyway, if you have been through something similar, like me, or something completely different, and you want to share it in the comments, go right ahead. But, um, I'm gonna go, so I will see you when I see you, and take care, okay? Bye!